In some areas of mathematics, we frequently find ourselves multiplying together all the whole numbers, starting at some value and continuing the product until we reach 1. Expressions like those shown here. If the starting value is high, it's very inconvenient to have to write out all the members of the product. So we introduce a concise notation. We take the first member in the product, in this case 3, and write an exclamation mark after it. In our second example we would write 5 with an exclamation mark. When we're reading these expressions, we normally read them as 3 factorial or 5 factorial. Of course, the exclamation mark does carry with it the idea of a shout or a cry. So in the past, some people would have read these as 3 shriek or 5 shriek. You might still hear some older mathematicians use these terms, but it's rather going out of fashion nowadays. So useful is this notation that we promote it to the rank of a function. We take the function n factorial to mean that n is a whole number and we multiply it together with all of the whole numbers beneath it. And we keep going until we get to 3, 2 and eventually 1. We take it as understood and fairly natural that 1 factorial should be equal to 1. Sometimes though we also need to refer to 0 factorial it's not clear what that should mean. Since the factorial is a function we've introduced ourselves, we're free to define what we mean by zero factorial. It turns out, with a little further study, that it's very natural and convenient to regard zero factorial as being also equal to one. Where might we encounter the factorial function? Well, one place is in the study of Maclaurin series for some well-known functions. The series for e to the x is a power series in x and it contains all the powers of x and in each time we have a new power of x we divide it by the factorial of that power. You can see the pattern that's emerging. We'd go on until we get x to the n over n factorial and then beyond and keep going forever. This can be summed up very nicely with the summation notation. We start summing at zero, continue forever with an infinity symbol, and we write x to the power n and underneath n factorial. Notice how here it was very convenient to have zero factorial equal to one. That gave us the first term in the series, the one. Another such series is that for the cosine, cos x. This time we have only the even powers of x and the even factorials. Also notice that the sine alternates. This one could be written with summation notation, again using factorials, as negative 1 to the n, that ensures that we get an alternating sine. Then we need even powers of x only, so x to the 2n, and underneath we need the factorials of the even powers. Notice that I was very careful to put brackets around that 2n. The expression that's needed there is the factorial of the number 2n, which is different to twice the factorial of n. We must have the brackets in the way that they're represented there. There's a similar Maclaurin series expansion for the sine that involves only odd powers. You might like to look that up yourself. Another area of mathematics where we meet factorials frequently is in the study of probability and combinatoric theory. You might already have met the expression NCR, the number of ways of choosing R objects out of N objects. Sometimes it's also written as simply N above R in parentheses. But when we actually come to calculate it, what we need to know is that it means n factorial divided by r factorial and also divided by n minus r factorial.
That expression appears very frequently in the area of probability. Sometimes the product we want actually doesn't go all the way down to 1. Consider the following 6 times 5 times 4. It looks like it's starting to be a factorial, but it stops. We can actually rewrite this as a factorial in which we include all the terms we need down to 1, but then of course we must divide them away again. Written this way, we easily see that this expression is 6 factorial on top divided by the 3 factorial on the bottom. More generally, if we have, let's say, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and want to stop there, we could imagine including all the rest of the terms in the factorial, all the way down to 1, and dividing them away again, And now we can see that what we have is n factorial on the top and n minus 3 factorial on the bottom. Again, notice how I was careful to put the brackets round. It's n minus 3 factorial and not n take away 3 factorial. Notice also how it was easy to identify where the factorial on the bottom should start we needed to cancel off everything from n minus 3 onwards. That leaves us just with n, n minus 1, n minus 2. This is a very convenient trick in many areas of mathematics, including the study of Fourier series, for example. To conclude, I'd like to show you something just a little more sophisticated. The factorial function is really a very special case of a more general function known as the gamma function written with a capital Greek gamma letter. The gamma function is defined as the integral that's shown here. If you've ever learned about Laplace transforms, you'll see that it's closely related to the Laplace transform of t to the n minus 1. It turns out that when n is a positive whole number, we can show that that integral is in fact n minus 1 factorial. However, the gamma function is defined for all n except the negative whole numbers where it blows up. We can now see why 0 factorial is 1. If we look at gamma of 1, we would get just the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t dt. That integral can be evaluated to give 1, but on the other hand, on the right hand side, we see that that is the same as 1 minus 1 factorial, which is 0 factorial. So that, as I promised earlier, demonstrates why 1 is a natural choice for 0 factorial.